Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And here we're going to show that the hypergeometric distribution has the monotone likelihood ratio property. So if we let X be hypergeometric with parameters N, D, and P, N is the population size, D is the number of, say, defectives in the population, and N is our sample that we take. So it can be easily shown that the probably mass function is this, where these are combinations, D choose X, N, capital N choose little n, D minus, N minus D choose N minus X. Now X goes from these two values, the maximum of zero in this number and the minimum of N and D. And usually in my experience, I've always gone from zero to N, but it technically depends upon how many defectives are in your population and the overall population size. So technically X ranges from these two quantities. Now let's let D1 be bigger than D0. And let's look at the likelihood ratio. So what it says is we take this probably mass function and put it in the numerator, but we use D1. And then in the denominator, we use this probably mass function, but we use D0. And now let's examine this. This quantity and this quantity are identical, so they cancel. And now let's write out what these uh, combinations mean, right? So this is D1 choose X, which uh, reduces, or not reduces, but is defined this way. This combination is defined here. This one is here, and this combination is here. Now there's some commonalities, so the x factorial and x factorial cancel. n minus x factorial cancels. So the d1 factorial divided by d0 is here. Uh, d0 minus x is kind of invert and multiplied, and we keep it over this one. Here we have you know, n minus d1 divided by n minus d0. And then, of course, this piece and this piece go right here. Now, this is the tricky part, is we want this, I want to show that this is a function of x, or it's a monotone likelihood ratio in x, which is our data. So this piece, there's no x. And this piece, there's no x. So I want to take them out front and isolate them. That's what these are. Now this piece here, these are factorials, and D1 is bigger than D0. So the numbers here, the product of numbers here, are going to knock off the lower numbers from here, but we're going to retain some of the bigger ones. And that's what this represents, and I'll explain more of that in a second. And the, and the opposite, since D1 is bigger here, we're subtracting off a bigger number than this. So this is a bigger number than, than this denominator. So this factorial is going to knock off the smaller numbers in this factorial. <clears throat> so now, the, the, we're looking at here, and so we're going from, <clears throat> you know, the top number, of course, is D1 minus X, which is what this product is. <clears throat> and then we take this number you know, minus this plus one, and that's where we're going from. But now let's think about this in more detail. Remember, if we have, you know, we plug in an X value, you know, you know, pick something five or, you know, then we're looking at the product of numbers and they're fractions. So it's, and I'm gonna make this up. So it's one fourth times one fifth times one sixth, etc. But if we increase in X here, this number gets smaller, and this number gets smaller. So we're actually, and it's the same number of terms, but they just get smaller. So we're producting smaller numbers. So it becomes one half times one third times one fourth. And that product, those fractions, are bigger when we increase x than they are when we decrease x. So for instance, you know, one half is bigger than one third. And so we're, we're taking that product. So this number, this product, is an increasing function in x. So now let's look at this one. This one is just the straight product of numbers. So here, um, you know, if we think this number's bigger, 
So we're going from n minus d0 minus n plus x. That's the last number. And we're subtracting off those lower numbers from this factorial. And that is this minus this plus 1. This minus that. So that... that um, Oh, yeah, because this is subtracted off. And I'm, I'm going to have to rethink about that. That might be a, need a plus 1 here. But the the motivation behind it's the same. Um, so when x is smaller, this is smaller. So the numbers that we're going to, this to that, are smaller numbers than if we go from, you know, something bigger in x. We're, we're producting the same number, but... Um, they're bigger numbers. So this is actually increasing in X, right? So, so this, mono, this likelihood is monotone increasing in X. And that's not X factorial. That means I just got excited <laughs> showing that this is, has the monotone likelihood ratio property. And so this is sort of graphically what's going on. So this, is, this graph represents the monotone likelihood ratio. So... Um, Remember, the range or the support goes from here to here. But if we put D1 or D0 here, then the range changes, right? So the bottom piece is we it's the maximum of 0, N plus D0 minus N. So that's this part. And then it's actually constant. So that should be, you know, perfectly 0 until we get to this piece, right? So, and let me, let me flash back up to here. This one isn't even defined. It's zero when we're between these two quantities. And this is a number. So it's zero over a number. And so this is, this is zero. And then when we get to that number, it starts increasing, right? It's a function of x. So it's an increasing function of x until we get to the upper limit, right? Until we get to here. So when d0 is here, that's smaller than potentially smaller than when we put in D1. So it's, it's, it's two here, but then once we go outside the scope of that, you know, the model when it's, when, when D is D0, then the denominator essentially goes to zero. So this blows up to infinity. So the likelihood goes whoop, and it jumps to infinity until we get to the, the maximum of the support. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.